Hello, today we're going to be unboxing and trying out the Key iTech ClickBot. Now, this is a sponsored video, so as you'd imagine, it does contain an advert for the Key iTech ClickBot. Now, what we've got here is the full kit. This is a modular robot, so there are other kits available the standard kit, the starter kit, and the maker kit. And Key iTech are planning to sell the parts individually as well, so you can build more robots. But let's unbox this and see what's inside. Inside the main box are two boxes labelled one and two containing all the exciting robot parts. There's also a sticker sheet of various configurations for ClickBot and a quick start guide that tells you how to get going, connect to the app, and on the other side, getting started by building a robot called Back. Two of the configurations are called Bick and Back. There's also 50 other pre-configured robots and you can build your own custom ones. In box number one, we've got a lot of exciting robot parts, including the robot's brain, which is quite important. And we've also got the instruction book. So we've got a warranty card, the actual instruction book. And we've also got a booklet here that's got a description of all the parts. So there's various joints, the brain, various other linkages. But we'll go through this in a minute in detail and have a look at all of these parts. Box number two contains, as you'd imagine, even more robot parts. So let's get all of these out and see what we've got. This is the contents of box one. So we've got the brain, which we'll be looking at in much more detail during the course of the video. But I'll say that has a motor in it, so its eye can move, as well as a touch screen. And it looks like a camera mounted in here. We've got two wheels, which are both motorized. We've got a stick for attaching parts together, and that's also got an LED indicator in it. We've got four other motors, which are basically rotational motors, and we've also got some locker modules and various bases for the robot. You'll notice each of the parts has this connector on with three pogo pins, which are sprung pins, and some clips. So basically all you do is click it together, so this fits like this, and that makes a joint. So these are motorized. So now we've got a rotational joint like that. The other end of that we could fit onto the wheel if we wanted. Let's just click that together in the right orientation. So now we can make something with a wheel. There are two fixed bases provided for the robot. One has a normal 6mm camera mount on, so you could mount it onto a tripod or something and allows you to attach your robot to the other side. And we've got this one as well, which takes one of these motors that would just clip in there. So that would make a kind of rotational turntable mount. And it also has a self-adhesive bottom and it comes with spare self-adhesive pads. Now the parts feel like they fit together really well. If we plug two of those together, that's a pretty good connection. It's more than strong enough to hold it when the motor's turning. However, they do come with these locker modules, which are separate pieces that you put on between two parts. And then you turn this and that locks it in place, so that can't be pulled apart at all, so that makes a much stronger connection. And this is everything in box two. So we've got four more of these joining sticks with the LED bar in them, four more of these motors, two more wheels, so now we can make a four-wheel vehicle, and some new parts. And those are a manipulator, which has got soft fingers, and presumably that's motorized, four feet, which can sense pressure, got two proximity distance sensors, which you can also bend at a right angle to add to your robot, and two suction pads, which are actually suction pads, but they've got little holes in, so presumably there's an air pump in each of those that can suck and blow air. So there's quite a lot of parts in this kit. It seems to be quite comprehensive. We've got those eight joint motors, the four wheel motors, and then obviously the motors in the suction pad, the gripper, and the motor in the eye there, and all those other accessories. So having lots of motors means you can build quite a good robot. So all of these motors as well feel quite good quality. There's hardly any backlash in there. They feel like the gearboxes are nice and tight, and they're not gonna make loads of noise when they all move, which is quite good. So let's get this brain connected up and connect the app up. Here's the robot's brain, and I've already powered it on, and we can see we've got this eye flashing away on the front here. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Around the back, I'll just show you there's a rubber flap, and we've got USB-C for charging, and the power switch, and two of these connectors to build this into the robot. So if we swipe from the bottom here, we should get a menu, and initially we see a robot back. If I scroll this way, we see BIC, and actually if I click on these, it tells you how to assemble them, which modules to put on, so we'll have a look at that in a minute. There's also three menu things here. We've got one for system messages, one is about the app and one for Wi-Fi. So I've connected this to my home Wi-Fi already. There's two ways to do this. I can connect straight to the robot's brain with the app, but in both cases, there's a QR code displayed on the screen or displayed on the screen of the app, and you scan one with the other, and that allows you to connect them. So for now, I'm connected to my home Wi-Fi, 
and if we connect here it says to connect the app so let's have a look at that both the brain and my phone are connected to my home wi-fi so we've got the app installed here if i click on connect to brain and click on connect and we're going to use the wi-fi then i get the little brain here which i can click on and then it should say it's connected to my phone. So now everything's connected. To start with though, we don't really need the app. We can build back and BIC without the app and it tells us what to do on the screen. So we just click on back. It tells us what we need to do and that's get one of these modules and plug it onto the bottom here. And you'll notice the orientation shows you which way to put that on. So let's uh, try and get that right. There we go. We can see immediately that lights up and it shows you where to plug the next one in with this flashing light. And on the screen we've got the instructions so we need to stick that at right angles. So something like... Oops, I was right the first time, there we go. So that's the next module and now it's saying putting one of these skeleton sticks in. So that needs to go like that I think. Yep, there we go. And what's next? Another one of those. Let's see which way that goes with the divider that way. So, okay, so I did that wrong and it says to change the connection so it's the right way round. So I need to turn that one round. We'll get there eventually. Maybe I put it on that, that way up. Yep, there we go. So that's good. And now it's saying use the base stuck down to something to mount this on. So I put one of those motors in the base and that's stuck down to the tabletop. So now we can connect the rest of the robot to it. And that should just plug in like that. And the robot's asking if it's stuck on the desk okay. So let's say yes to that. So we've immediately got back the robot, who you may remember is on the quick start card here, and it's already animated and has a bit of a personality, so apparently its head is touch sensitive, and apparently it can see my hand in front of its eye. So uh, basically we can use that as kind of a robot companion. Now it does have a menu, and there's various things we can do if we go and scroll on the menu, including a quiz and various other games. So I've also built BIC, which is a balancing robot on two wheels, as you can see there. Now, to do that, you have to calibrate the IMU, so it makes you build another robot first, so it can turn the brain all around, a bit like doing the IMU calibration on a drone, and then it tells you how to build BIC, and that does the same thing through the front screen as we did with back. So if we stand that up for a couple of seconds, it should start balancing. And there we go. Now, it doesn't sense where the edge of the table is, but... Um, the camera does work to drive it forwards and backwards, whoops. And that balances really well. You can see that's um, way calibrated quite well. Let's just stand that up again. Let's just switch back to brain, BIC, there we go. Right, so if it falls over, it seems to uh, lose its ability to balance. So I'd recommend doing this on the floor. So we can shove this around as long as we don't do anything too drastic. Just stop that running off the edge of the table. So there we go, that's the that's BIC, the two-wheel balancing robot. Now the app contains lots of other robots you can build and each one's got a little preview. There's around 50 of those in different configurations. And if we go and try and build one, then we get this 3D view that's quite good that tells you how to build it. So it tells you step by step where to connect those modules. As well as that, the app of course is connected to the brain. So it appears on the screen here as well telling you what the module is that you need to connect next, just the same as when we built BIC and BACK. I've built this four-wheeled robot with instructions from the app, and now I've built it, the app has turned into a controller, so you'll notice it has four wheels, and it also has feet, so we'll give it a drive on the ground in a minute. It's actually quite substantial, so I don't want to drive it off the table, but if we click on the other mode in the app, then it turns into a walking robot, and we can command that about to walk along. So let's give that a spin on the carpet. It's pretty fast actually, and it steers really well with those four wheel drive and four wheel steering, kind of. Way. And not too bad at walking on carpet as well. 
as well as the 50 pre-configured robots, you can make your own. So I've made this weird snake robot and there's several ways of programming it and sharing those features with the community. So we can program it with a scratch-like programming language or we can just simply position it and record and play back the motion. So let's have a look at that. So I've built the robot and that's made a 3D representation on the screen here. So now if I move one of these things, we should be able to see the joints moving in the screen. So let's just move its tail round and its head round a bit. Let's just put that flat. So now you can see the configuration's changed. We can go and add that. And then we can go and put it back again or do something else with it. Let's just move that a bit and move that a bit more and add that in. And then do another one. We'll just move the tail this time and add that in. And now if we play them, it should move between them. If we have wheels on the robot, we can make a steering motion like the demo for the robot with four wheels, but we don't in this case. The other option we do have is the rotation motion where we can select an individual joint, we can select the speed and then we can play it. And after three seconds, it should rotate that joint. There's also a graphical programming language, which is a bit like Scratch, so I've built another robot to demo that. That one's got a proximity sensor and it's got a little arm attached. So here's my graphical program. We've got all sorts of functions here. So first of all, we're reading the distance sensor and seeing if it's less than 100 millimeters, turning the band to red on one of those skeleton pieces. And if we click on this, we can go and identify which one it is and it gives us the correct number. So that turns red and then it does some motions which are the demo motions. And we've set these by going and using the last method to position the joint and saving the motions. So it does a little loop. And then at the end, it sets the band color back to green. So now each time we go and put our hand near the proximity sensor, it should color that in red and do a little jiggle and then color it in green again. The functionality in the graphical programming language is quite comprehensive. You can access the touch sensors on the brain of the robot, the touch sensors on the feet, as well as that proximity sensor, the suction cups that we haven't actually looked at in the video, of course, the wheels and the manipulator and all those other components, the lighting bars and everything else. So you can read the sensors and make an intelligent robot that you can then share that through the app, through the community section. And actually there's some there already that other people have built as well as the 50 pre-configured robots that you can download. So altogether, this seems fairly well thought out. It connects together really well and it seems pretty good quality. And there's gonna be more functionality added through firmware as time goes on. So there are several kits available. This is the full kit. There's still the other three kits. One is bigger and two are smaller. And those are available through the ClickBot website as well as Amazon US. And I'll put those links in the description below. So thanks to ClickBot for making this video possible. That's all for now.